Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I have to show you my shirt. You ready? See? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I got so many of these, it's ridiculous. Before we get into the news, though, I want to thank you for coming to my channel. I am very thankful to have you here. I really do appreciate it. My first article, when I saw the the title of it, I thought, what? You got to be kidding me. What if the most notorious notorious murder of a gay man wasn't a hate crime? It's... Uh, that's that's an interesting idea. <clears throat> Most people who have heard of the 1998 murder of Matthew Shepard remember the story. A gay 21-year-old college student in Laramie, Wyoming, approached two strangers at a bar. Offended by his advances and wanting to punish him for c coming on to straight men, the two pretended that they were gay, only to lure Shepard into their truck. The men then drove him to a prairie, tied him to a fence, bludgeoned him with a pistol, and left him there barely conscious. He was found some 18 hours later and taken into a hospital, where he died several days later. The reason I highlight this story is because, after reading it, I thought... This is so, we've seen this movie played over and over and over again. We've seen it played over and over again. The, the media takes a story and they form it and shape it into something that forwards their agenda. In this case, gay rights. And they just ignore all the facts on the ground and they create this narrative and that apparently is what happened here apparently a man has uh, investigated this and this man who's writing this article is gay himself but he found out about the investigation that this other man did read his book and then said I gotta go check this out for myself and he found this was in what was it 1998 so it's 26 years ago people in Laramie still don't want to talk about it but apparently he wasn't killed because he was gay he was killed because he was uh, a rival drug dealer but that story wouldn't have sold uh, advertising time in newspapers and wouldn't have uh, presented the right message and so they just changed it to one that was more palatable for them and we've seen this over and over again with the media they will create a narrative with a story and then when the truth comes out they don't admit that they were wrong they just continue with the lie it's really something to think about This next story that I have is kind of depressing. Millennials had it bad financially, but Gen Z, Z may have it worse. I highlighted a little bit in here. It says Gen Z is <clears throat> spending more than millennials on housing and insurance. Gen Z has more debt than millennials did, even after accounting for inflation and higher incomes. Roughly one in seven Gen Zers are maxed out on their credit cards more than any other generation. So far, Gen Z workers are more likely to go to college, have jobs, and make more money than millennials did, but they are also paying 31% more for housing than their counterparts were a decade ago after adjusting for inflation. Spending on car insurance by people 16 to 24 
more than doubled between 2012 and 2022, BLS data shows, while health insurance spending for that age group is up 46% after inflation. Well, we're definitely not headed in the right direction, are we? I mean, that's, <laughs> wow, that's really bad. And this next story, uh, <clears throat> is one that uh, I wanted to share with you because I think it, it's indicative of a trend that we're seeing in, in America and I suspect other places as well. Discriminatory diversity programs are taking a beating amid legal onslaught. Over the past few years, the federal government, universities, and other institutions across the country have ended or rolled back programs and policies that prioritize certain races following a series of lawsuits. Fueled by the landmark decision in Students for Fair Admissions versus Harvard in 2023, in which the Supreme Court ruled race-based college admissions unconstitutional, legal groups have ramped up efforts to dismantle racially biased initiatives that often masquerade under the guise of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Over 100 cases attempting to strike down discriminatory practices in hiring, admissions, and grant distributions have been filed since 2021, according to data collected by the Washington Post. Many states have already written policies into law requiring educational institutions terminate or drastically alter discriminatory DEI programs such as minority-only scholarships and engagement centers, with some putting an end to DEI effort offices entirely. So far, court rulings have ended racial discrimination in multiple areas, including relief programs, grant-making agencies, and federal contracting programs. Two federal agencies, the Farm Loan Forgiveness Program and the Restaurants Revitalization Fund, were both defeated in lawsuits for discriminating against white business owners in granting COVID-19 relief funds. So we're seeing this more and more with lawsuits being used to force policy changes. And it just seems like we the people are, are losing control. We no longer, we no longer, our voice doesn't matter when we vote uh, people into office. Uh, they make policies and then they get sued and then the policy gets changed and we had nothing to do with it. It's really troubling to me. Uh, there's a lot of things in our, in our country and in other countries that need to be settled at the ballot box, not in courtrooms and not in other places. But that seems to be the, the way that things are going nowadays. In, in many ways, I think our world has gotten too complex. It needs to get simplified. <laughs> Maybe I'm just old fashioned, huh? Well, I pray for you anyway that God will bless you in so many ways, in your life, in your health, in your mental soundness, in your, your financial soundness, in every way possible, God will bless you. And I pray that he will do that same thing for every person that you love. This is the Vietnam era vet out.